In this short video, we're going to talk about how we can treat the derivative as a function. Now, we define the derivative only at a single point. But there's no reason why we can't define the derivative for every value of a or every value of x where that limit is defined. So we can think of f prime of x as a function of x, and the domain is going to be all the values of x where that limit is defined, meaning that it has to exist and be finite. So here's an example. Suppose we want to calculate the formula for the function f prime of x, given that f of x is radical x minus 2. So we'll start with the definition and go ahead and use our function definition. And we see that we're going to have a quotient where in the numerator we have two radical expressions and they're subtracted from each other. So in that case, if we reach into our algebra toolbox, the tool we would like to use in order to simplify this expression would be multiplying by the conjugate. So we multiply top and bottom by radical x plus h minus 2 plus radical x minus 2. Now we have to take care with the algebra when we do that. In particular, when we're going to get the difference, we're going to be subtracting x minus 2 in parentheses. But if we do that carefully, the numerator simplifies to just h. And now we have a common factor of h in the numerator and the denominator. So h divided by h is just 1. And now I can use direct substitution. I can just replace h with 0 and clean that up a little bit because I actually have radical x minus 2 plus another radical x minus 2. So I get 1 over 2 times radical x minus 2. So f prime of x equals 1 over 2 radical x minus 2. So Notice that when we're calculating the derivative as a function, the answer is going to be a new formula. It's not going to be a single number. Let's look at another example. And in this example, we're given the graph of f of x. And what we're asked to do is to use that graph to sketch the graph of the derivative. Now, we're only getting an estimate here. We don't know what the formula is for f. We don't know the formula for f prime of x. But nonetheless, we can get a pretty good idea of what the sketch of the derivative looks like. Well, how is that possible? Well, again, Remembering our geometric interpretation, the derivative is the slope of the tangent line. So I know that the derivative is positive when the graph is rising as we go from left to right. It's negative as the graph is falling from left to right, and it gets positive again. So that means the derivative would be positive, then negative, and then positive. In fact, I can even say that this is steep, and I can even estimate by just looking at that, that that's going to be more than two, maybe three, is what the slope of the tangent line is starting out. But then it gets very flat, and then it gets uh, completely flat, at least instantaneously. And then it starts being slightly negative, and then very steep and negative. In fact, I could estimate that this, the slope of this part, the tangent line in this part of the graph would be 
negative two. And then it's still negative, but not as steep. Then it gets through zero and starts increasing, but just with a small slope and then a larger slope. So, I can estimate that, all right, my derivative is going to go somewhere between maybe negative two and positive two or positive three. So I'm going to make sure that my uh, <clears throat> x-axis is in the middle of the vertical axis here. And then I'm going to use where the points where the derivative changes sign, or where the original function changes from being increasing to decreasing. And so I would say that on these portions of the graph, the derivative must be positive. And then on this portion of the graph here, the derivative is going to be negative. And in fact, I might even be able to uh, sketch a couple more points here. So if I want to sketch the derivative, like I said, I thought that this, uh, this is pretty steep. It's at least two. I'm going to say that around there. I'm going to start around maybe two and a half. It's going to go down. It's going to be flat here, zero. And then maybe this might be the steepest part on the negative portion, and that might be about negative two. So I'll go down here and say that's about negative two. And then it's gonna get less steep. And so it's still gonna be negative. Negative derivative means that it's below the x-axis. And then it'll go through zero. It'll start to get steep. And then maybe here it ends up maybe back at you know, one and a half or two, something like that. So I'm gonna do my best to try to draw a smooth curve through those points. So I've got the idea that it's gonna turn around there. So I'm gonna start over here, try to go through that zero, come down smoothly through that turnaround point, try to go smoothly through here, and then doing the best that I can to make a nice smooth curve there. And so this would be the graph of the derivative. Well, not exactly, but it is an estimate and it has the important information. It tells us that we understand when the derivative would be negative, meaning the graph of the derivative would be below the, the x-axis, and when the derivative is positive, so the graph would be above the x-axis. There are many ways of writing the derivative. Uh, so we've learned f prime of x. Uh, we could also write it as y prime. And then here's something very different. We have something that looks like a fraction. We say dy dx or dy by dx. And sometimes we might even say dy over dx. But usually it's dy dx or dy by dx. This is called Leibniz notation uh, because Leibniz invented it. And it's not a fraction, but it looks like a fraction and it's going to help us at times to think of it like a fraction. So instead of dy by dx, we could have df dx. And then here's something that we're going to use a lot is we're going to have d by dx of something d by dx of f of x. And so this d by dx, we also we think of it as a verb, meaning take the derivative with respect to x. There are some less common notations, at least in a uh, first semester calculus. Maybe in upper division math courses, you'll see this more. Uh, maybe even in a linear algebra class. And going back to Leibniz notation, uh, we often write that dy by dx is the limit as delta x goes to zero of delta y over delta x. 
And that emphasizes the notion that delta y and delta x are finite differences in y and a finite difference in x, but dy is an arbitrarily small difference in y. And the last thing we want to bring up is uh, some important notation. Many times we're going to find the derivative as a function, but then we want to evaluate that function at a single number. And to do that, we draw this vertical bar, which is called the evaluation sign. And then as a subscript, we write in the value that we're going to substitute. And so we're going to substitute 3 in the place of x, and our answer is 7. And so this evaluation bar, we just say evaluated at. So x squared minus 2 evaluated at x equals 3 equals 7. Now note, it is wrong and you will lose points if you just say f prime of x equals x squared minus 2 equals 7 because this is saying that f prime of x equals 7. Always. And that's not true. f prime of x only equals 7 when x equals 3. So you have to show that you understand that by using the evaluation symbol. Well, I hope you found that this short video on the derivative as a function was useful.